Hello, friends. Welcome to the 22nd Sunday of Ordinary Time. So happy to be with you to share the gospel and homily for this week. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When the Pharisees with some scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they observed that some of his disciples ate their meals with unclean, that is, unwashed hands. For the Pharisees, and in fact all Jews, do not eat without carefully washing their hands, keeping the tradition of the elders. And on coming from the marketplace, they do not eat without purifying themselves. And there are many other things that they have traditionally observed the purification of cups and jugs and kettles and beds. So the Pharisees and scribes questioned them. Why do your disciples not follow the tradition of the elders, but instead eat a meal with unclean hands? He responded, Well did Isaiah prophesy about you hypocrites, as it is written, The people, or this people, honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines human precepts. You disregard God's commandments, but cling to human tradition. He summoned the crowd again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. Nothing that enters one from outside can defile that person, but the things that come from within are what defile. From within people, from their hearts, come evil thoughts, unchastity, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, licentiousness, envy, blasphemy, arrogance, folly. All these evils come from within and they defile. The Gospel of the Lord. It's so good to be with you and this week has been a big week for us Augustinians with the feast day of St. Monica, the mother of Augustine on Friday, the 27th, and the feast day of her son, Augustine, on Saturday, August 28th. And for us Augustinians, these two people are so important for us because one, it shows Monica persevered. She never gave up. And Augustine, even though he thought religion was for old women like his mother. God never stopped waiting. And God never stopped waiting and Monica never stopped praying. Both persevered. And Augustine, finally, his heart on his restless journey was touched to the point where he said yes. And it was all because of other people. His mother, St. Ambrose, others who walked with him on the journey. And they are examples to us, friends, to never give up, to persevere. And in a special way, don't give up on any members of our family who have fallen away from the practice of their faith. And I would say, pass this little homily along. Because if anyone is watching this homily and you've been away from the practice of your faith, welcome home, welcome back. We need you, we want you. Don't give up. Give Jesus another try. Augustine went over half his life thinking he could do it on his own. Didn't work. So all are welcome here. And we need you, we want you, we love you. I was taking a visitor to the John Hancock Tower down in Chicago downtown. And we went to the 103rd floor where they have the uh, observation deck. And this was a visitor from out east, and I believe it was the tallest building he had ever been in. And it was a, kind of a fall, cold, little damp, windy day. So we're up on the 103rd floor, and you can feel the Jan Hancock Tower swaying. And he was terrified. He said, we gotta get out of here, the building's gonna fall down. And I said, I am no scientist. But from the little bit I do know, we should be very happy this building is swaying. Because if the building is swaying, then that means it's giving and taking. We should be worried 
if the building was not swaying, if the building was erect, if the building was rigid, that's when we can have a problem because then it could crack, could snap in half. All you smart scientist people out there, you know, the, you can explain it a lot better than me. But what I do know is that the building has to give and take. I think in today's gospel, Jesus was talking about rigid people. People who had no give and take. People who were more worried about the rules than people. Now, I am not against the rules. Believe me, I'm not. Rules are good. Rules keep us in a box. But the box is not what's important. What's important is that we know the rules, understand the rules, believe the rules, and then live the rules. When Jesus gives us the commandments, the commands, well, God gave the commandments, but when Jesus says the greatest is to love God, to love yourself, and to love your neighbor as yourself, the greatest commandment is love, not necessarily the rules. Now, the rules, I am not preaching heresy here, okay? The rules are good if we understand why the rules are there. I have met some rigid people in my day. I've met some rigid people in my ministry. And I hate to say it, they are some of the most miserable people I've ever met. Because all they do is complain. All they do is say, why isn't this one doing that? Why isn't that one doing this? Well, don't be looking at everyone else. How about look inside your heart? Because we hear in the gospel, Jesus says it's what comes from inside that defiles, not from what comes outside. And what he's saying is that's our heart, friends. How are you and I living the best way we can? How are we following the commandments? How are we trying to keep Jesus as our center? How are we saying yes? That's what we need to do. And then out of that yes to Jesus Christ comes the way we live our lives. And if we follow Jesus, we don't want to do all the things that Jesus talks about. Evil thoughts, unchastity, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, licentiousness, envy, blasphemy, arrogance, and folly. What a list. That could be us. But Jesus says, if it comes from within, that is the sinfulness. That is the uncleanness. But we might say, but some of those things do come from us. And we do worry about, you know, that we commit these sins. But if our true heart is with Jesus and those happen, we will then ask for God's forgiveness. And we receive his forgiveness through the sacrament of reconciliation, confession. We receive his forgiveness when we go to Mass and we ask forgiveness through the penitential rite. And Jesus forgives sins. But friends, it's when we do it on our own that we have problems. You've heard me say that before. How can we do this life on its own? It's got to be so empty, so miserable. So let's look in our hearts and let's ask ourselves, are we miserable? Are we rigid? Are we just following the rules to follow the rules and then judging everyone who doesn't? Or are we someone who strives to follow Jesus to follow his commands and to be the best that we can be. I'll never forget a story. I don't know if it's a true story, but I heard it in a homily of a, a resort town. And the church always said, you know, you have to be dressed appropriately to come to church. Well, a woman comes in in her bathing suit. I don't know if it was a bikini or one piece. I don't know. And everyone's snickering at her. And everyone's saying, how dare her come here? So someone went up to her and said something. And she says, I was down at the beach and someone stole all my clothes, all my money, all my car keys, all my identification, and I didn't know what to do but come to church. See how the quick judgment of people was looking at the outside and judging her? When that happened, they found her something to wear, someone gave her a coat, someone did something, and they were able to help her. 
But here was a woman, she understood the rules, but it's real hard to follow the rules when you have no clothes, when you have no phone, when you have no car keys. And she came to church and then she was helped. And maybe those people that first judged her, I hope they said, ah, oh, maybe we shouldn't do that. So friends, let's not judge people. You know, there's one judge and that's Jesus Christ. He doesn't need our help. And let's be honest, how after listening to this gospel, are we open or are we rigid? Do we have the give and take, which is needed in life? Or do we just say, these are the rules, follow the rules, and if you don't, you're no good. I'm not throwing the rules out. But what I will say is for those of us that like it all black and white, the only thing in 27 years as a priest that I have found is black and white is that every one of us live in the gray. Every one of us has our own story. Every one of us has our joys and our sorrows. Every one of us has our sinfulness and our greatness. Let's strive to be our best. And the way we do it is by keeping Jesus as the center of our life. Do it on your own. Two words. Good luck. So my friends... Let's not be rigid, but let's be like that John Hancock Tower that has to do the little give and take. And let us always treat people with dignity and respect. Let's get to know people and their story before we ever judge. And remember, there's only one ultimate judge, and that is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who will one day judge each one of us and ask us, how did we live? Let's keep Jesus as our center. Let's never give up. And boy, is it good to be here with you. It is so good for us to be together. So friends, how are you living the Christian life? And how is this gospel challenging? Because it's challenging to me, because sometimes I am guilty of those things. And sometimes I want to judge others. Let's look in our hearts. Let's follow Jesus. Never give up. And always know that he will always take us back. All we have to do is say we're sorry. So friends, good to be with you again this week. Um, from people sharing with me that they're liking this uh, little uh, venue we're doing. So if you like it, share it with others and let's evangelize. Let's evangelize together and let's invite anyone who's been away and bring them back. So maybe forward this to someone who maybe would find this helpful. But no judging. Jesus judges, not us. Friends, God bless you all. Have a great week. We'll see you next week. And again, no, you can always check me out on my, on my uh, website, FatherTomMcCarthy.com, and you'll see... My preaching schedule is starting with our parish missions, and maybe I'm coming to your area. Check it out. The list is there, FatherTomMcCarthy.com. God bless you all, and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. St. Augustine, pray for us. St. Monica, pray for us. Bye-bye.